Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be participating in this extraordinary event, particularly that I feel that with the awarding of Maurice Culot, justice is done. <laughs> to many people present here and outside this beautiful room, Maurice was a guiding light in in a time of terrible storm, if we think that the first seven years of Maurice's life, the worst massacre ever perpetrated in history, went over Europe. And out of the shambles of this terrible torment was born the worst architecture ever realized in this world. It was the dark ages which sat down on the world of architecture. We could call it an ice age for architecture, and we are not out of it. Now, against this terrible freezing and destruction, some of the survivors and the newborn grew up still in the ruins of what used to be a beautiful world. And it is those remnants which were for us, and particularly for Maurice, who started archiving, registering those disappearing walls and testimonies of delight and beauty. I keep wondering, with all the beauties which we see realized by the Driaus Prizes and the Driaus nominees and the Driaus painters, what is it why we are still in the margin? Why is it why that we, the real leaders of this profession, are still in the margin? Well, some of us chose to remain on the margin. But Maurice was, is a character of the center. And as we know, to occupy a center is a much smaller space than to occupy the periphery. So there's this huge army fighting on the periphery and still not being recognized, while the modernists still occupy the center. And we are always sort of apologizing or trying to applaud ourselves how much nicer the things are which we are doing. And it's true. And things were so bad that when I was young and I met Maurice, and they had great ambitions not only to draw but also to build, he said, Leon, <laughs> things are too bad to get involved in building. You are an architect, and therefore you should not build, because it was only possible to do architecture when you do not build, because the most important thing was to really reconstruct a theory which would become the moral guide against the devastation which the cities experienced, which the societies experienced, and which particularly education experienced. Maurice collected archives from early on together with his friend uh, Philippe Rottier and, and many intellectuals in the Belgian capital. They created the first really powerful uh, citizens' movement to oppose the destruction which had been initiated in Brussels, not by the Germans, but particularly by the World Exhibition 1958. Brussels, which had been a beautiful city surviving uh, the devastation of the Second World War was, was in the grips of some kind of indescribable, undescribed, un unexperienced monster. That building, instead of building 
a better world turned out to be not only to destroy a beautiful world, but to replace it with an inferior and seedy and sordid one. Maurice, when he became director of, the, of La Cambre, of the main school of architecture in, in uh, Brussels, he started with students to do projects to oppose this devastation. The replacement of handcrafted environment by machine dictated environment. The world of pedestrian and human scale replaced by machine and automobile scale. This led to extraordinary events because Maurice's uh, teaching was not only the most searched after by students, but became also internationally known, and he attracted a lot of talent. And these projects were not just for students and for professors, but they were widely published. Maurice was a genius of publication already then, he still is. And uh, the press conferences he held in Brussels and often at the European Center became widely published, and so much that actually the Minister of Education became highly alarmed what, what was happening at La Cambre. And there was, to, to really understand Maurice, he's a man of extraordinary intelligence, ambition, talent, but he has also this devastating modesty, which made that most of his actions were never signed. I always said, why don't you sign your books? He has published many hundreds of books, helped write them, wrote them himself, and his name appears somewhere in footnotes. Uh, it took 50 years, I think now he's signing. <laughs> find his books. But at the worst event was that the students occupied the, the school, which was about to be threatened by cutting a major uh, finance, and at a public event with the minister there and television filming, there was such a strange tension that in order to relieve the tension, Maurice went to the minister and stroked him lightly over his head. I said, please, you know, things are okay, like a child. <laughs> the result was that he was fired. <laughs> and he then created, the best students came with him. Some of them became actually very prominent. And uh, you may have seen the large palace built by uh, the Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan. It's designed by a student of Shefik Birki of, of Maurice, who was a brilliant student then. So it was called L'Ecole de la Reconstruction, which meant that we live in a time where we really not only reconstruct the physical fabric of Europe, but the physical fabric of the common good which we are losing. L'Ecole de la Reconstruction had fantastic students, incredible. Uh, projects were produced, and then the ministry refused to credit the project. So the school was dead, could not exist. And luckily, at the same time, there was not yet a unified, single spirit, modernist spirit dictating uh, cultural policies in Europe. Maurice was appointed to become director of the history section of the Institut Francais d'Architecture. So he moved to Paris and maintained the Archive d'Architecture in, in Brussels but became mainly involved in publishing, archiving uh, uh, projects and, and making projects in Paris. This went extremely well. For many years, he produced the most exciting books. Uh, you can imagine about architecture, Pays Basque, discovering architects who were completely forgotten. And uh, <coughs> that also, after 10 years of this beautiful, or 15 years of this, beautiful production and recognition, he, I think he earned a Chevalier de la Légion or something, des arts et lettres. So he was somewhat a little recognized, but was also, he had to leave his job. And then finally he became an architect. He started building. And so he has like several careers of teacher, publisher, and now build off. You see some very beautiful buildings already realized in Val d'Europe. Now, just another few details, if I have time. Maurice is the man who has the most stamina for work I know. I remember him producing books and projects which sometimes 
made him not sleep for several nights, living on chocolate, croissant, and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> so he has a very strong stomach. But Maurice also left Belgium to avoid the military service, I think, or other things, and joined the Frank Lloyd Wright Fellowship for a while. And after many months with Frank Lloyd Wright Fellowship, Maurice had stomach ulcers. <laughs> Another interesting episode. We met because I had an exhibition in Brussels of which Maurice produced a catalog a few years later called La Reconstruction de l'Europe, or uh, Rational Architecture, but it was about reconstruction of a European city. And uh, he invited me to Brussels to talk to his students. And I was very proud, and I should. I had just won big prizes uh, for La Villette in Paris, reconstructing La Villette. And I showed this with fantastic perspectives and drawings, a complete city. And Maurice, after the, there was an audience like this, at that time architecture attracted still a lot of people, and Maurice said, yes, all your theories are really great, and we are going to use them here. But why do you produce such ugly architecture? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm learning, you know, that, that was my... <laughs> and why don't you do like François Spurry, for instance? Or Christian Langlois, who has done an extension to the Senate. François Spurry, I had of her done this fantastic lagoon town near Saint-Tropez. But François Langlois, I, I didn't know, so I went to see the Senate extension in Brussels, and it was a very ugly building. So I said, why does he say that? do like Christian Langlois. And then I found out that it was not the second Senate extension in Brussels, but in Paris, where there was a perfect classical building just built by Christian Langlois, uh, all in stone next to the Luxembourg Palace. And that really uh, brought me on the course of making less ugly detail <laughs> and thinking also about architecture. But to sum it up, what Maurice's life is really uh, symbolizing is that a single man out there destined to lead was, could only operate on the periphery with enormous effort and was able to set up a mechanism, publications, conferences, and teaching, which was all about building the common good because the common good is unlike Agent Smith and up to Ayn Rand said it's just the result of selfish pursuit, but is a project. And it's the abandonment of that project, of the physical aspects, the physiological and human scale aspects of, of uh, the common good, which is now destroying the planet and which we are up against and which we are trying to repair. So it is, and the common good as a physical entity, some, uh, it's really a physical creation which unifies not only Europe, but all humanity in a form of city where you don't have to pay entrance. Whatever your race, whatever your creed, whatever your color of skin, and whatever your accent, it's public space. And public space is only acceptable when it's beautiful. And Maurice's life was dedicated to make such seductive arguments and such seductive books that you don't have to explain it. You don't have to quote Heidegger and Derrida to explain why this is beautiful. It's just because beauty is our most, our greatest common good. So I think that the crowning of Maurice is really crowning the attempts of most people here in this room. And I'm very glad about it. Thank you very much. Many friends, <laughs> so many friendly faces.
how to say a cheerful thing you to all of you in a few words, in a few minutes. Uh, I would like to start with a movie quiz. <laughs> who said who said that and the name of the film? Quotation. You, gentlemen, are not really trying to kill my son, are you? <coughs> the first among you to find the answer will receive a copy of the Taliesin Fellowship, the bestseller of Harold Zellman, because yesterday he promised me to give me a commission of 10 persons on each copy cell. <laughs> about, about book, speaking about book, don't forget to read Inventing the New American House, Howard Van Doren Show, by an uh, architect by Stuart Cohen. Is among us. It's a very beautiful book. And uh, every three months, we receive a booklet by mail of Bob Stern, latest work. <laughs> it's always a source of inspiration and sometimes jealousy. <laughs> uh, I would like to show you that book because it, it seemed quite difficult to find it in the USA. It's the last book by, it's not mine, uh, it's the last book of Lucien Steil. It's called In the Mood for Architecture. And it's, uh, with a foreword by Liam Kreyer. And I met also, uh, I met uh, Jean-François Lejeune. He gave me a book this morning, Transformation in Classical Architecture, done by the University of Miami, I think so. And the book is produced by, uh, it's edited by Victor Dupy. Dupy? Dupy. Lupi, okay. So this was the, the, the book section. Okay. <laughs> it will be short, I have only uh, two pages too. Sorry. So what could do with this book now? So, okay. Oh, sh <laughs> I am almost 80. And I still do not know exactly who I am. Sure, I am Maurice Kulo because you see me. But I am not only me. With the exception of geniuses, a woman or a man is made of many ideas, thoughts, and ideals coming from other women and men, relatives, friends, colleagues, and even rivals. This makes us both unique and multiple. It means that a father could be a son, and a mother could be a daughter. An eminent prize, as the Richard H. Driehaus Prize, must then be shared with these many contributors, alive or dead, known and unknown. At 18 years old, did you understand me? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> at, at 18 years old, a long time ago, I start studying, 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 yeah, architecture, and there I met my wife, the painter Chris van de Giesen, and Philippe Rotier, a lifelong friend who later created a European prize for classical architecture, asking Leon Crier and I to manage it. The prize has been awarded to excellent architects and artists, such as François Spoeri, El Wakil, Dimitri Porfirios, or the film director Emir Kusturica. At the age of 24, I was a worshipper of Frank Lautreit and became an apprentice at Taliesin West in Arizona. And after I moved to the Paolo Soleri studio in Scottsdale, where I carved my home, my own house, beneath the ground. After learning from the USA, I moved back and settled in Brussels, a city at the time destroyed by bad planning and a lack of urban spirit. The fight to save the city as a place of freedom and civilization was for me a chance to meet new people, among them the sociologist René Schoenbrot and Peter Cook of Archegram introduced, introduced me to Leon Crier. Both René and Leon gave a new direction to my life, a more rational one. Around the same, around the same time, I discovered a drawing in the basement of my apartment building, a perspective of a people house done in 1917 by an architect, age of 95 years at the time, the forgotten Antoine Pomp. He asked myself what I should do with this drawing, and it became the cornerstone for the foundation of the Archive of Modern Architecture and the publishing house AAM. Today, I reckon that to publish is an, is an amazing chance to enlarge your own horizon, share ideas, and acquire new friends alive and dead. So, one day, you discover that you are you, as it is said in the fairy tale of Wolfgang von Goethe, the great snake and the beautiful lily. You have built a bridge and crossed the river, which divide the outer life of the senses and the ideal aspiration of human being. Owing a lot to so many people, I wish to pay also tribute to the countries dear to my heart. Belgium, my place of birth, more or less. <laughs> in Brussels, where I learned architecture in the land of Tintin and Snowy. Uh, there, in, uh, more or less 30 years ago, I think so, with, with Joanna Ali Manestianu, we have built a classical street in the center of the city. Spain, my beloved mother home, and the Basque country, my land of adoption. Italy, Pier Carlo Bontempi, now my love for his country and cities, Roma, Palermo, 
Torino, Parma. La France and Paris, which have adopted me without any question, offering the occasion to build stylish buildings and nice neighborhoods, close some time to the one of Mark and Nada Bredman and my, uh, my friend Jim Tinson. Uh, Jim, you are there? No? Jim? <laughs> He's not there? Yeah? Where are you, Jim? Oh, this is Jim. Thank you, Jim. Jim, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Jim Tinson. We have built a building together, Jim. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> we have built a building in Paris. <laughs> It's called the majestic because it's majestuous. Uh, and the USA of the 60s, and then the USA of the 80s, when I was invited at the School of Architecture of Miami, and the USA in Chicago of today, which honors me. Finally, finally, Chicago as a link back to my hometown of Charleroi in Belgium, a 19 industrial city linked by the union of the American Knights of Labor. The last famous war to finish. To love the past and to be nostalgic is not a sin. If you don't care for the generations that have produced it, the amazing cities we still use and love, no one will in turn take care of you. Richard, founder of the prize, member of the jury, the University of, I must say, Notre Dame, as required by, by Duncan, Duncan Stroke yesterday, don't say Notre Dame, say Notre Dame. <laughs> and so I, 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 I obey so easily because Duncan is probably building the, the best and the more beautiful church in the world, in the USA, amazing architect. Uh, professor and students of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Mesdames, Messieurs, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> By the way, for the young people in the audiences. The answer to the quote from the beginning was the question of Clara Thornhill, the mother of Roger Thornhill, alias George Kaplan, in Hitchcock movie, North by Northwest. <laughs> That's all folks, like they say in the cartoons. <laughs> Thank you very much.